Question number two of the day, if Ed will let me. Yeah. All right, question number two. And this is another question about something that Jesus did that this person is confused by and doesn't understand. Matthew chapter 8. Uh, it's the story of when Jesus encounters uh, these two guys uh, that are demon-possessed, and he confronts them, and then he casts the demons out, and the, the demons go into a herd of pigs, and then the pigs rush down the hill, and they fall off, and they all die. And the question that this uh, listener says is, I don't understand the significance of that story. What is there to be learned from that? Well, you know, there are interesting things that I, uh, a lot of that, that's the Legion story, right? He yes. does. He, he in does. one account, yes, in the in other, other account, no. no. Okay, the, yeah, but right. yes, you are correct. Yeah, that he says, "Who are in your le We are legion." The demons. The say demons. That. Are yeah. Are, we are legion. Yes. Uh, so I have an interesting part for all of that that I just recently learned. But all right. That's well, why don't you, lay why don't you throw that in there? Come on, we'll man. The other part. I do want to say, in case people were watching, wonder why I freaked out. We just blew that light bulb right there, and we did. It got really bright for a second, and then really dark. So in case you saw that and you saw me act as if I was having a stroke. That's why it was It was very disconcerting. And now that I looked over there, there are other lights. All I can see is spots. I'm sorry for having looked over there. So now. share with us your learning on this. Yes, Well, uh, so one of the interesting things about all that that I had never thought about, and I was listening to another uh, favorite theologian of mine and uh, talking about the fact that when Jesus came, um, a part of everything that's happening, so... The demons know who he is, of course. right? But they don't know what he's there for. In hmm. fact, I had never thought about that, but occasionally they'll say, "Jesus, what, what are you doing?" Yeah, well, you in want? this story, it, I went back yeah. and reread it. They do say, "Are you here to torture us before right. your appointed time?" Yeah, because they knew there was a time they coming. They knew there was a time coming. <laughs> yeah. And so this guy's making the point, and I do wonder. I, you know, again, no one we'll know until we get to heaven and can ask about this, but they don't know what he's doing, and so they're regularly attacking things that he's doing. And, uh, you know, there's just a part of the plan of God they don't know. And so this guy's making the point of they think the best thing they can do, he's in human form, and they're thinking he's exceptionally vulnerable as a human. Mm -hmm. And so let's kill him. Mm -hmm. I mean, we kill him. Maybe in human form we'll be done with the whole thing. And, of course, they don't know that by doing this thing they think it's going to be destroyed. They're actually playing into God's hand the whole Absolutely. time. And it brings about the resurrection. But in their world, again, they're just thinking, uh, that's, prob that's not about your story. But that was so interesting. It was just a thought I had never, yeah, ever heard. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. that they're, I had always, I'd never really locked in on that part if they regularly ask him, what are, you, what are you here for? Yeah. Why are you here? What are you going to do? We know here you are. And sometimes he'll just say, hey, hush, mm -hmm. don't talk about any of that kind of stuff. But they don't have a clue what he's doing, which gets to the whole thing. People often think, well, God and Satan, they're almost equal. No. And not almost equal. <laughs> not even Satan's close. just taking shots in the dark yes, at yes, stuff. Yes. He has no clue what God's got going on in the overall scope of things. So you don't even have to worry about that kind of no. stuff. He's just taking shots in the dark at stuff. Exactly. Well, so I, I think I think back to the story. Well, going off the demons, thing, I don't know if the question is directly about the pigs or not, but I think it's good to set the context because I think sometimes, once again, for modern readers reading this stuff, it's even hard to even. I, the idea of Jesus talking to demons, because demons may be a, <laughs> uh, a a block for some people. Of mm. there are a lot of people oh, who yeah. believe in God, but you may not necessarily believe in demons or the devil. But that's a big part of what Jesus is doing <clears throat> on earth. Is we often think of just what happens at the cross being just about me and Jesus, about my personal sin. But Jesus is really combating all the forces of evil and sin and all of this destructive power that is wreaking havoc on our world and of course mm -hmm. our personal lives and our personal sin and all that is part mm -hmm. of it but that that's in, in this that's what jesus is doing is he's confront he often is going through uh either healing sicknesses which is a form of evil mm -hmm. right oh, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a, a consequence of the fall yeah, which exactly right. Right. is about sin mm -hmm. so yeah. right so he's dealing with he's dealing with this but then other times says he just bringing out unclean spirits or demons and so this is a big part of Jesus' interaction with this man is he's he's freeing this man from the power of sin that is in his life, which is these demons and that, and then puts them into uh, pigs, which is so, often uh, strange to many of us. So, uh, you know, this takes place in Israel, and if you don't know, pigs are unclean in uh, mm -hmm. Judaism, so mm -hmm. 
you have to ask yourself, first of all, what's there doing a herd of pigs in the middle of Israel? That's an interesting mm -hmm. kind of thought when you read this yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And there's this guy that's so demon-possessed and he hurts himself and is a danger to others, one of the right. accounts tells us, mm -hmm. that they put him in chains and they have him outside of their town. Out where the, to the tombs are. Uh, mm -hmm. The tombs are mm -hmm. and very near these pigs. Now, the pigs are outside because they're unclean. We yes. know right. why they're outside because yes. right. the good Jewish people who are apparently raising the pigs, <laughs> but we can't have them, can't in, have town. them in town. They're, <laughs> they're out here raising the pigs, or they've rented land or Whatever. something. Who knows? Something. something. But so, they're not raising them for them. No, they're not raising them for them. Because they're so, not eating them. You know, one of the <laughs> things that I had a professor years ago that was talking about this, and it's always sort of stuck with me, is that, you know, as you're reading that, you do think about those things. So there's these pigs. They're outside the town. This dude is outside the town. They put him on the level with these people. He's dangerous to them. They make him unclean, but they're making money off him. He ain't doing them any good. And Jesus basically says, this guy, as you talked about in your thing, their people are sacred. Yes. Right. And these, these are just, they're just, they're they're just pigs. things, pigs. You're making money off of them. And so Jesus says, these ought not to be here anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yeah. laughs> in Israel, most likely they're collaborating with the Romans. They're mm -hmm. probably raising pigs to feed to the Roman, Roman army. army. Yeah. Uh, but they're getting away with it. They don't get to be bad as tax collectors. I'm not collecting taxes for them. I'm just making money off yeah, the Romans. Whatever. You know, mm -hmm. whatever. Like that's different. <laughs> so, and so he saves the one guy and mm -hmm. takes care of the yes. pigs all at the same time. He sets all priorities he right. He sets everything and probably really, really upset them that the pigs were gone. Well, it does say yeah. at the end of the story that as soon as he does that, the townspeople all come out and they go, you need to get out of here. Yeah. They mm -hmm. kick Jesus out mm -hmm. of town. Mm -hmm. So, again, it goes back to your point of they're not looking at this guy that got healed and going, thank you, Jesus, for rescuing right. this human being. Right. You've got to assume right. he had family or something oh, there. Of course Surely the family's like, oh, thank you, Jesus, yes. rest of the towns. Get but the pigs. pigs. Yeah. You the pigs. The, it's a one dude versus pigs. It was their livelihood, man. Yeah, apparently. Our money-making opportunity is down the hill. We don't, so. that's, again, I'll just say that's speculation. That's our speculation. But the, the yes. pigs yes. are there for some reason, and yeah, they can't right. be there for any of the Jews because they can't eat none of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yes. But what we do know for sure is that pigs are un, were unclean at the we time. We know that for, for sure. For, for the Jewish yes. people. And we know they're upset about the pigs. And, and we, we know the people are upset about the pigs. And we're both, and we're all three very happy that pigs are no longer unclean, very, so we can eat happy. them now. Sunday was Sunday National Pig, pig Day. Yes. <laughs> it was good for us. You gotta eat me some pig. I haven't had pig this week. I need some. So there we go.